Hi, good evening. I'd like to welcome you to Palm Praise 2. I do thank you for tuning in, and I certainly hope that peace and blessings have been upon you and your family this day. And since yesterday we read How to Eat to Live, today we're going to go into the seeds to grow success. We are now in chapter two, and the title of this is Goal Setting, Designing Your Landscape. Hmm. Designing Your Landscape. For I know where I came from and where I am going. Jesus in John 8, 14. A rudderless ship and a purposeless person are eventually standed on desert sand. Napoleon Hill. Goal setting is a paramount key to success. It is said that one who fails to plan also plans to fail. Goals are set for us from the time we are conceived. After conception, a child is planned to be birthed in nine to ten months. Our parents' goal and hope is that we walk by our first birthday. We are expected to be potty trained by age three. We are expected to start traditional schooling by age five or six. We then have a goal to complete elementary education by age 13 or 14 and secondary education by age 18 or 19. From there, in typical situations, our goal setting and life planning is placed in our hands. After graduating from college, I realized that there were no longer parental or governmental imposed goals for me to reach. It was now all up to me. Where did I want to go? What did I want to do? Where did I want to be? What did I want to become? It was then that I also pondered family goals. Who would I marry? How many children, if any, would I bear? Existing outside of my previous goal and pose world was a scary place to be. The absence of goals meant no direction, no focus, no place to belong, no structure, no reason to strive, no reason to press on. Once I began to take control and set goals, there was no more order and structure. Wait a minute, because that didn't sound right. Once I began, I'm going to repeat that correctly. Once I began to take goals, once I began to take control and set goals, there was more order and structure to my life. But later I realized that I had set my goals far beneath my level of potential. <laughs> my major life goal after completing college was to be self-sufficient, a homeowner, self-employed, and free of my parents' household. In June of 2004, this life goal reached fruition. I had become a condominium owner, was self-employed as a real estate consultant, and appeared that month on the cover of the National Realtor magazine as one of the nation's 30 under 30 real estate executives to watch. I had achieved 
greatness. My definition of greatness, that is. And then it happened. The downward spiral began. I asked myself so many times, how could I fall so hard from the mountaintop? After countless months of reflection, meditation, and journaling, I realized that part of my ensuing decline stemmed from the fact that I had not given myself further direction. I had reached the pinnacle of success, according to my definition. My psyche was then asking the question, now what? Where do we go from here? But there was no response. Only the echoing sound of the question. I believe that my sights were set too low for the potential of greatness inside of me. My mistake was not quickly creating another life goal after accomplishing the previous one. Goals, dreams, and visions are important for every area of our lives. Below is a list of goal setting questions and thoughts you can ponder as you begin to establish and write down goals for your life and business. Hmm, so this is actually going to be a homework lesson. I, I'm going to do this myself too. I'm going to go ahead and do a little preview to look in regards to how many we got here. Okay, got a total of seven. Hmm, that's number seven. Okay, number one, life fulfillment goals. What is your life's major purpose? And how is it fulfilled in your daily life? Write your obituary. What do you want it to say? How do you want to be remembered? Create some goals that will allow you to live the story you wrote. Two, health fitness goals. Do I need to lose excess weight? Do I need to establish a weekly exercise routine? Can I make it a goal to get off of a medication? I've been prescribed by enacting some natural method of healing like losing weight, changing my eating habits, or beginning an exercise program. Number three, family goals. Do we spend enough quality time together? Can I make it a goal to have game night three times per month? Family dinner time once a week, once per week, or date night three times per month with my significant other. Number four, spiritual goals. Have I set aside time for daily meditation, prayer? Do I attend worship, fellowship services? On a regular basis? Can I carve out space in my schedule to volunteer or give of my time to others in some way? Number five, mental exercise. When you cease to learn, you cease to grow. Do I read regularly that I might grow? Make it a goal to take a weekend class that focuses on a hobby or other subject of interest you might enjoy learning. Consider taking a class to learn another language. Number six, personal financial goals. Make a goal to rid yourself of credit card debt within a predetermined number of months. Plan to build your savings account to a specific dollar amount. How much will you set aside from each commission check to deposit in investment vehicles? Do you have an emergency fund 
that can cover three to six months of living expenses. Number seven, professional goals. Forecast your gross annual income for the year. Set a goal to increase the number of prospects in your marketing database. Quarterly income goals can help you determine how many prospects you need to come in contact with in order to reach your goals. How many listing appointments do you need to go on in a month to achieve your target number of listings taken for the quarter? When you conduct open houses, keep a running tally of how many guest walks through the home versus how many you actually work with as clients. This ratio determines your client conversion ratio. Set a goal to increase your conversion percentage. Consider increasing the average dollar value of your transaction. Analyze the positive return of investment for advertising dollars spent. Make a plan to increase the return on your advertising dollars. Endeavor to increase the number of your referral generated leads by a certain percentage. Hmm. Yeah, that's some homework. Yeah. I got some homework to do. You got some homework to do? Because I do too. We both got some homework to do. From one to seven. And if you need to just stop, hit rewind, and then push play in order to just hear uh, number one through seven again, just so you can either take it down or take in the heed the questions. And then after you have the questions, the goals, then we got to do it. Goals cause you to strive and put forth focused effort to reach a predetermined point. Lewis Carroll said, if you don't know where you're going, any road will get you there. In the One Minute Manager, Ken Blanchard put it like this. How long would you want to bowl if there were no pins? Who would watch football if there were no goals to shoot at or any way to score? The number one motivator of people is feedback on results. Having goals gives you a measure of success. When I started endurance running, I could have progressed through my training program and run 30 miles without thinking it a major accomplishment. But because I set a goal, at the beginning to run the Chicago Marathon, a 26.2 mile race, it was a major accomplishment. Not so much because of the number of miles, but because I had set out to reach a goal and I had achieved it. Since I knew the date of the race, a timeline could be established for my training. My running coach prepared a weekly workout schedule, figuring backwards from the goal race day. It is much the same in business. Knowing your ultimate goal or destination, you are able to plan the smaller journeys along the way that will get you there. Effective goal setting requires that each goal be broken down into quarterly, monthly, weekly, and then daily actionable steps. Make sure these activities are very specific and measurable. For example, if my actionable step was to run 50 total miles during my first month of training, that leaves too much room for debate and procrastination. My actionable steps need to be much more precise. In this instance, my steps should be defined as running two miles a day, four days per week. And on four consecutive Saturdays of the month, run two, three, four, and five miles, respectively. These activities are well-defined and easily measurable. Now, 
Let's say you set a goal to increase the number of people in your marketing database. In order to make this goal specific and measurable, determine how many additional people you would like to add in a defined space of time. Project the number of social functions you need to attend, marketing activities you need to conduct, and our phone calls you need to make in order to achieve that number of people. And for this take, I'm going to stop it right there. Uh, the next preview for the sense is going to be your goal might look like this. So we're actually going to have an example of what the goal should look like. And then once we get through that, that's going to take us through the rest of chapter two. And we're going to be going into chapter three, which the preview for chapter three is the management. Excuse me. It is management. But the title of the chapter is Time Management. Planning for the Harvest. So stay tuned. A poem praise too. I want you to be blessed and have a wonderful rest of the evening. And I will speak with you soon here on Poem Praise Too. All right now. Later, y'all. Till next time.